Hey, chat, can anyone hear me? Can anyone hear me? Hey, everyone, I'm just setting up the board here. I'm also going to be setting up uh, everything. Just tell me if the audio levels sound fine. Am I too loud? Is the audio background too loud? I lowered the audio a little bit. Can chat hear me? Stream health looks fine. All right. Let me look to be a okay. Hey, Brian, what's up? All right, if everything looks okay and the audio sounds fine, I'm going to head into the stream proper right now. All right, let's see if it works. Hopefully it did. Can anybody, can everybody see the board? Um, all right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the BattleCon Wanderers Unleashed Stream Discussion Rules Wording Thingy. It's really hard to say what this is because this isn't going to be a playtesting stream. In the usual sense, I'm not going to be playing characters. That's not what we're actually playtesting this week. So I, I I think it might be a bit odd to some of you who might not have seen these. Oh, that's great, Brian. If you can hear and see me, we we are A-OK. -okay. We're, we're perfect. So w what's this stream going to be about? Well, it's going to be about these new cards that you see right before you. And I think it would be apt if I pulled out the comparison of what they look like normally, or at least what they look like right now, quote unquote, in the previous versions. The Jin. Nope, that's Kenny. Get out of here, Kenny. I need the Jin. All right. Yep, Brian, you are the only eyes and ears that matter, apparently. <laughs> but that's fine. That's completely fine. So I believe this might be the... Um, this might be the best, like, way that we can show it off is by just comparing a few cards together. So the fronts of the cards, you know, we've changed them. They actually have their backgrounds now. Yeah, that's pretty cool, right? But really the big thing here is that we're basically doing a few changes. So notice how these abilities look different. And how these abilities look different. And how these abilities look way different. Not just by the design-wise, but also because of the way they're worded. Th these aren't final, by the way. Um, a lot of the keywords and a lot of the words that we're using on the updated cards uh, aren't even, like, the final ones. Like, we're continuously improving them. Uh, we're continuously trying to make sure that the wording is correct in such a way that it's easier for players to understand with less text. So, for example, let's compare two... The, the Jin's two unique abilities, right? So we have Wishful Thinking. 
The Jin begins the game with six wish cards in his supply and his power for power card and play on its active side. The opponent may anti one fish one wish per beat to gain its effect, after which it is removed from play. On the other hand, we have this. The Jin begins the game with six wish cards in his supply and empowered form in play. Limited opponent anti, trash a wish to gain its effects. End of beat effect, if there are three plus trashed wishes, the Jin becomes powerless. Otherwise, he becomes empowered. So there's a bunch of differences here. You can obviously tell, right? So I think the big one here is that this one is the typical Battlecon UA. This one is not. Number one, we're using a bunch of keywords here, right? Limited opponent anti. We also, instead of calling it power for power, there's just a form card in play. And um, notice how there's a thing called like trashes wishes, becomes powerless, becomes empowered, right? So we're not sure whether we're going to use trash. We are considering using the word use. We're considering to use the word anti. Uh, we're not sure yet. But the point of all of it is that the new character cards now have all the components that character is supposed to have on it. So for example, there's the power for power in the lower left. As well as the six wishes that the Jin can grant the opponent on the right. This also makes use of limited opponent anti. This means this is the same limited opponent anti is the same thing as the opponent may anti one wish per beat to gain its effect, after which it is removed from play. That's that's literally the same thing as limited opponent anti trash a wish to gain its effects, right? Less words, hopefully more clear, and hopefully more understandable. Is it currently making sense so far? Hopefully it is. Actually, I don't think Korra's the correct character to do this for. I think it might be better to bring out Rin, who I think is a better example of this thing that we're trying to show off. All right, Rin, where are you? New Rin. I just realized that Rin might be related to Dravel because they do have the same last name, right? Where are you? Dravel is in Fate? No, he's in Trials. Dravel. Look at your cards. Cold water. Cold water. They're both from the north. I'm almost convinced that they're cousins or sisters or brother and sister at least. Yeah, I think this might be the better way to show this off. Let's get rid of these two styles, and there you go. All right. Will this new na framing format be run through all the characters being revised through Unleashed? Um, yes, Brian. The new format will not... Actually, the thing is, if we're going to do this, it's not just going to be Unleashed characters. It might just be all of them. So it's not just going to be the de devastation characters, and not just like the, uh, uh, not just the wanderers. It might also just be like even the war, fate, and trials characters included. This is since since this is our last, well, technically the last chance we'll get to update the game to its quote unquote final version, since we're not necessarily planning on releasing new character sets. This is like our big chance to make sure that Battlecon comes out in its quote-unquote best form. And if we do that, we're basically changing everyone, and I think we're reprinting almost every character card in existence. So one thing I want to point out to characters like Rin, for example, is that a lot of the effects that used to be in the ability the ability is now split into two things on the new cards. So if you'll notice, there's a top part where everything is italicized. 
right? And there's a bottom part, which is the actual rules text. In the older UAs, she didn't have that, right? So for example, Frostbite is, Rin has five Frost tokens and begins the duel with all of them. When Rin hits an opponent, blah, 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 blah. This one is the top part is actually just a summarization of what the ability does. And the bottom part is actually the mechanical abilities that are tied to it. So this doesn't even include our newest version where after comma hit landed isn't the way they're going to be doing this effect. So there's a there's a timing window here. When Rin hits an opponent after all on hit effects, that might just turn into a timing window that's different like naturally. So so we're not necessarily sure. Um, after hit landed might also be a different timing window. Um, actually, we're not even, even sure if we're going to use hit landed. So it might be like after connected or after struck or after blah, 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 right? Stuff like that. So again, the w final wording is not final. Uh, no, no, no. Okay, Brian, let's move on to the big things. So here's, here's the big difference, right? Reveal. If the opponent anti the wish this beat, the styles printed values are considered to be plus zero. Or, this is the new version where it's reveal, comma, wish not antied, and then the stat buffs. So, uh, a lot of things are changing basically because of the fact that we want it so that you know whether or not to keep reading the card's text. So, rather than putting the condition after the trigger, we're taking the Kalistar approach. So, if you've played Kalistar from War... Uh, where's Kalistar? Kalistar, Kalistar, Kalistar. There you go, Kalistar. So if you've played Kalistar from the updated versions of War, she should have the similar thing where she does this. Hit, comma, human form, right? So we're basically planning to do that for almost every single conditional in the entire game. Almost every single conditional in the entire game. Uh, we're not also we're not sure about these symbols that happen before the wishes. Rin also has the same thing with the frost counters. We're not sure about that either, but yeah. And note that these aren't final. Note that these aren't even the updated versions of the, what we have, because we're basically changing these almost like every hour at this point. But you have stuff like um, like. I think we're italicizing the stats to make it more clear that they're the things that you get. So the stats will be italicized rather than just colored bolded. So the Jin, the Jin shows off that. This is what I want to show off for characters like Rin. So there's a lot of characters in Battlecon that basically care about how much of a thing you've given someone. So, uh, there you go. Frost art is actually the most important thing here. Uh, this is frost art, isn't it? Okay. Oh, we changed the name. Right, because shattering is a saga style, so we changed it. So, there you go. All right, so Brian, uh, I talked. We Brad and I talked about this on the podcast. Um, yes, so that's the big. The biggest problem is actually going to be number one: is that we're probably going to be a bit delayed because we want to just fix this and make sure that it comes out correctly. But it doesn't actually add that much of a cost, is what Brad told me. Um, I think he said something along the lines of like it will just cost, quote unquote, just. Cost us four dollars, three dollars for every copy that we have to do, and if it means bringing like a good complete game to the backers, and a, a game that people will enjoy for the rest of their days and have it in their collection, 
and it makes them feel like the product is complete and whole and premium, then that's worth it. Number one's the problem, though. And really, the big thing that we have to do is sell people on it. Like, make people think, or at least convince people, that the weight is worth having clearer cards that are no longer so wordy and annoying looking. And I firmly believe that it's worth it. It's worth the time and effort that we input and worth the wait to have cards that are just so much clearer, have better wording. Shucks. I don't even know if there's a character who moves directly in here, but... Kai, uh, Vekel, Felana, John. Does Vekel have uh, teleport? I know he does. And if so, I think we can show off this one as well. I'm pretty sure his unique base is a teleport. Doomblade. No, all right. There you go. Yellow style on Beckel. All right. Haunted. Oh, and I might as well show off the fact that we're making just everything way more clear, way more parsable. All right. So let's let's talk about Rin first, right? These are some of the changes that I just want to show. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm, I think something along the lines of, like, I heard somebody say, it's better to have a late game that's great then an on-time game that's bad. <laughs> oh, I'm glad you guys are loving it. I'm glad you guys like the change. So uh, let's go over Rin. Why did I want to talk about Rin? So Rin has this wording that a lot of characters who give markers or status effects to people do. So for example, on hit, the opponent has three or more frost. You, you may remove all frost to gain plus three power. If any frost were removed this way, the opponent cannot gain frost this speed. Right? That's a long effect. This is what the effect looks like in the new version. Hit. Frozen opponent. Recover all frost for plus three power. Do not inflict frost this beat. It's much more clear. Now you're thinking, what's frozen? Frozen is now defined in her character card. You have frozen if the opponent has three or more frost inflicted. So what's recover mean? It means regain or recover. Uh, we're not sure whether we want to use regain or recover. I'm pretty sure we're sticking with regain since that's what we've used before. But that's another big part about this change is that a lot of effects that mean the same thing use different words. So for example, recover a token, get back a token, regain a token, right? All of them will just turn into regain in order to avoid the confusions, right? And then what's inflict, right? Inflict means to give your opponent a thing, right? So this is stuff like inflict a curse token from Rexan or inflict chivalry. We're not sure if inflict is going to be final either way because it sounds weird for characters like Alexian where they inflict something good on you because you don't inflict someone with happiness. Yeah, <laughs> delays happen. We're sorry. We just try our best to, to give you guys the, the best product it can be. I think it. I think the delays oftentimes come from, you know, mishaps and experiences. But this time, it's a delay that's way more about just us not going to be... It's We're not going to be happy to just give you guys a rushed thing, right? Um, Brad said it on the podcast himself, right? Where it's, li it's like, like he made the mistake of rushing a game out. Because he felt like he had to. And we're not going to make that mistake again. So yeah. Um, so characters like Rin. Where they care about the opponent having a certain number of things. They just now have a keyword. A character specific keyword. That makes it so much simpler than saying. If your opponent has blank or more. Blah blah blah. You can just say. 
Frozen or Frozen 3, Frozen 4, Frozen 2, right? Like that way, it's just so much easier to put it on her cards. And if you're wondering what does Frozen mean, the character's literal unique ability defines what Frozen means. I mean, that's the point. All right, so let's put these boys away. By the way, this is a very interactive stream. If there are any questions about the wording rulings and all of that stuff, feel free to ask. Like, this is the literal best time to ask. All right, so Anya. Wh why are we looking at Anya? Anya is the other one where... Is another set of characters that care about when they do a specific thing, right? So there's a lot of characters who have thresholds where it's like... Uh, what's the thing? Like, you know how when Marmalee has three or more concentration? Ah, uh, no, I don't think that's the best example. I think I think Anya's just gonna be the best example. So Anya has a bunch of effects that basically care about whether or not you flew this turn. They're soaring. That's the best one. So soaring's effect states, Start a beat. If you took flight during this beat, move one space. This means that you have to fly on the beat that you use soaring to gain the start of beat movement. Now, instead of that, it just says start, lift off, advance or retreat one space. And what is lift off? You have lift after changing to flying. You have lift off during this beat. After changing to grounded, you have power minus one during this beat. Again, Liftoff is defined in her unique ability, making it easier to reference Liftoff on her cards. So there's a few more things that we want to talk about. If you look at Soaring's on-hit effect... Sorry, soaring start beat effect. You'll notice how this one says move one space, and this one says advance or retreat one space. We are now getting rid of the word move. So the bottom cards are the updated cards. And the goal of the bottom cards is just that they have less wordy text. So overall, uh, the text space is just, the text is just shorter. Also, the images are different. So if you notice here, right? Like the Anya's picture is more zoomed in on the top. So maybe that's why. But the text space is around the same. The text box, I mean. All right. So we're getting rid of a we're getting rid of move and turning it into just calling it advance or retreat every single time it's relevant. Why? Why do we do this? Number one, the word move is so overloaded because it's just wild, right? So what what does in regular BattleCon when I say move, it can be four different things. It could mean advance or retreat. It could mean push or pull. It could mean move as in like the very act of movement. And then it could also be move as in the category of effects that exist in the game called movement. So you can have an effect that says something along the lines of like move one or move one or two spaces. Your opponent cannot move this beat. You lose two life if you move this beat. Movement effects do not activate. That could be a card that exists in Battlecon, and the word move appears in it five times, and they all mean different things. That's absurd. <laughs> so we're trying to get rid of that ambiguity. So now every time we say move, we just say advance or retreat, or push or pull. And if you're looking at these cards, you'll notice something else very different. 
Look at the hit effect. This says hit grounded. You have plus two power. Take flight and move up to one space. What's this one? Grounded plus two power. Transform to flying to flying and advance or retreat zero to one. So what's the difference? We remove the word space because it's clear that you're doing it through spaces. There's there's no ambiguity. There's no need for the word space, so we can get rid of it. But the big thing is instead of saying up to one, we just say zero to one. Because it's literally the same thing. It makes it very clear that Anya is legally allowed to move zero with the effect. Plus, you can just use numbers now. It's great. Because in Battlecon, uh, we've had cards that are like this and this. Dodge is the best example. So in Battlecon, you can't just say move up to three because that implies you can do zero. So when you want them to be forced to move, they have to move one, two, or three spaces. If you switch sides with an opponent, that opponent cannot hit you the speed. What's the updated version? Advance or retreat one to three. If you move past the opponent, avoid attacks. So much more cl clear. Right? So avoid is going to be a new quote and unquote keyword, which means you cannot be hit, right? Again, this is not final, so I know that the rules lawyers will be like, oh, does this mean that I can avoid attacks from people I didn't move past? Right? So we, we, we should probably say avoid their attacks instead of avoid attacks. But you see where we're getting at, right? Move one, two, or three spaces is significantly like more complicated than just saying advance or retreat one to three. Hey, UWBW, we love you too. AJ, we're gonna get there. In fact, let's talk about that now. Since I've already just talked about Anya and we're done with her. Anya, get out of here. So this isn't even updated yet. Welcome. Four special action is now just actually a style. It is legit just a style now. So Jay, um, what's going on with older characters? Are you talking about like characters that were printed in War and Devastation? If so, um, they're just getting reprinted at this point. If we're doing this overhaul that everyone will get changed, we're just gonna reprint all the characters and include it in Unleashed. So that includes all the characters in War, Fate, blah, blah, blah. At least that's what Brad said on stream. Uh, sorry, on podcast. So, the Force special action is now literally just a style called Force. Um, we're thinking of changing it to Switch because a lot of Battlecon online players just call it Switch. So, we might as well just call it Switch here, too. But there you go. And Switch is iconic at this point, but yes, there you go. It is now just actually a style. That way it's clear what it does. It's clear how it interacts with things. Because for people who didn't know, the four special action is a style, except when it's not. So you can pair it with cards. So basically, while the four special action is in your hand, it is a style. Otherwise, it is not. That's really dumb. Why is it a style sometimes in a style's... And not a style other times. Weird. So now it's literally just a style all the time. So that we're not confused. So that it's not weird. And it's not crazy. Oops. Other big change. Oh, sorry. Old one is to the left. New one is to the right. This templating is not final, by the way. So don't be worried about it. I don't know what Jay-Z stands for. I like calling it Switch. Yeah. It's good to know that you guys like it as a style. You guys, you peeps. 
Force Force is it a fair? You know what? I mean, as much as I would like to say that fainting faint is an actual fair. Fainting fake, striking strike, I think is also a fair, a pair. So, okay, so let's look at haunted, right? What's different? Before activating, you may remove a wisp from the board. If you did, move to its space and gain plus one power. Otherwise, retreat one space. So instead of that, we have this new format, choose one. Uh, Hearthstone players might know this. Before, choose one, teleport to a wisp, withdraw it, and gain plus one power, or retreat one. So if you played Magic or Hearthstone, you know this format, you know, choose one of the following, and you perform them. Rather than doing this long text, then otherwise retreat one space, right? See, so this is the thing as well, Jay. You, you're mentioning that, oh, so Wellsy can now finish her out of discards? Nice. Here's the big deal. If we're doing giant system changes, like, say, turning Switch into a style rather than this weird non-style that is sometimes a style, it also means that some characters may be affected. Case in point, characters like Wellsy. We're not sure if that would break her or not, but we'll have to look into her and check. So what's most likely going to happen is that the wording on Welsi herself will change in such a way that she can maintain her current functionality. Good to hear, Koenig. Uh, we're just calling it Switch, though, because we can't call it Force because the resource is called Force and it just gets overloaded, too. So uh, one other thing you might not have noticed is that there's a new keyword here. It's called teleport. So move directly is now just teleport. Move to its space. That's just a move directly effect. But now it's literally just a teleport. It's clear what it does. It's clear that when a card says teleport, you're not going, oh, one, two. You're going, what? You teleport here. Like you go off the board, you teleport. You don't one, two. Instead, you teleport. That's just so much clearer. That's what people call it anyway. The first card in existence that has that effect of move directly is literally called teleport. So, <laughs> like, like this card, uh, Kadath's card. There you go. Kadath, me boy. See here. Move directly to any space. Teleport. Nah. There you go. Teleport. Move directly to any space. Teleport is the first card in all of existence to have the teleport effect. Therefore, making it just the apt, most apt name for that effect. Jeez. Ah, uh, okay. Jay-Z means jeez. I don't think it breaks her either. And it really depends. That's up to the balance team. I'm not part of the balance team for BattleCon. Um, because as much as I love making guides, and as much as I love community interaction, I will admit that I'm not the highest level tournament player. So I'm not sure about the high level ramifications of letting Welsi do that. But I'm pretty sure some tournament player will tell me, oh, it changes this one specific situation, and therefore it makes this matchup way better, and that breaks her, or something like that. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if that were the case. Withdraw is a problem for people who do not speak English. So, we're not even sure if withdraw is going to be the word. It might just be, like, return or something. Um, yeah. So, that's a big thing. It's like, these keywords, not final. We, we know that they're not good yet. Like, teleport's good. Withdraw, we're iffy about. We're not sure if withdraw is the correct word. I mean, we could just say remove it, right? Yeah, last podcast was a great explanation. Yeah, so this is just kind of like an extension of that podcast where you get to interact with me live and talk about the changes you want to talk about, you know?
But yeah, there you go. So that, that's just a brief explanation of some of the changes that we're planning to do. Again, not final. Again, the words, not final. But yeah, um, we're also planning to change what the token discard is called and what the supply is called, right? Because there's the supply, there's the discard for your tokens, and then there's your discard piles, and then there's also the effect of discarding. Again, overloaded. So we might change what the discard pile is called for tokens. Something along like exhaust pile or like replenish pile or something like that. Yeah, return does sound better. And that's fine. You know, we're testing out words to see what works and what doesn't. This is a phase in testing where we have to go pretty wild with how we do everything because... Uh, how do I explain this? We have to go a bit wild because... Shucks. We can't just not do a thing because we're scared of changing things, you know? Um, a lot of people have given up feedback that like they just like it if nothing was changed. And while I agree to that to some respect in the sense that some things are better off not changing, like for example, I'm pretty sure we shouldn't put the logos, like the square wisp markers. We should just put wisp markers, right? So I'm pretty sure that like some things shouldn't change, but I'm also adamantly sure that some things should change. And I'm pretty sure you've already seen some great changes like this turning into that, you know? Or uh, I think my favorite change has to be teleport. Teleport as a keyword is just like so much more intuitive than move directly. It makes more sense. It's It just makes more sense. Okay. And um, what do you call this? What we can do now until the stream is over is just look at some of the cards to give you all a better idea of how they look. Uh, I'm not going to bring out their parallels anymore. Like, I'm not going to bring out the old version for comparison. I'm just going to bring out the cards so that you can all see how, uh, how it ends up looking as a cohesive character kit. Uh, Feilana might have been the worst character to do this with since she has two unique bases. Yeah, and I think Feilana might have been the best person to show the thing. Because she has a unique base which cares about whether or not the opponent has a base in their... Whether or not the opponent plays a base that is in her Gaius pile. Geese? Gaius? I, I have no idea. So, if the opponent's attack pair contains a base that is in your Gaius pile, you become an active player. Compared to start, conviction, become active player. What's conviction? You have conviction if an opponent's attack contains a copy of a card in your Gaius pile. Done. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. So we have reveal plus one card per car plus one priority per card in the Gaius pile. Oh right, she has the optional to trigger. So now instead of saying may, we can just put optional before the effect so that we know that you can just choose to not take the action. So this is a case where we can use otherwise, because this isn't a, a, a choice thing, right? 
this is a, if you have conviction, do a thing, and if you don't, do another thing. And she also has this cool symbol on her priority. It also should have it on professional. I don't know why it doesn't. Maybe this is an old version. But yes. So some cards will now have this thing. Uh, we're not sure what final sim what final symbol, what final look. But essentially, we want to make it clear to players that even though the card has printed stats, if the stats have the card has an effect that will change what that stat actually is. So this one should have it for power as well. But essentially, yeah, there should be like some sort of symbol that says that the stat can change in order to alert people that, hey, the card stats can change. Is the stream coming in correctly for everyone? Or is there some lag? My stream health looks okay. Ah, there you go. Game's telling me. Alright, okay. It seems that YouTube is getting mad at me for the buffering. I seem to be buffering a lot, I apologize. I wish I could fix that. Sadly, I cannot fix it. All right, I'm just gonna go back to the screen. All right, can anybody still hear me? Can anybody hear me? Hoo hoo. All right, so this is the part of the stream where we turn fully interactive. Are there any questions, comments about what you think and all of this? Do tell me, I'm interested to hear what you have to say. And I'm interested, I'm taking any questions. Level 99 games or otherwise. And uh, we might not play a game on the stream. We'll see. Hey, Jared. Hey, I'm glad you like it. All right, that's good to hear. I, I was... I was experienced YouTube popped up an error saying more could your stream and i was like oh no i lost my mind um so good to see that the stream is clear on your end but yes i am particularly excited for a lot of characters coming on wanderers i am i've been playing a lot of persona 5 so i'm really excited to play kenny <laughs> Oh gosh, Kenny's so cool. Uh, yes. Uh, what do you call this? I do not like the changes unless we get all changes for all the boxes. Well, 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 friend. If you had been on the stream earlier, you would have known that we're basically reprinting everyone at this point. Is so crazy? I mean, yeah, but what is level 99 games but crazy? 
The color text is particularly handy. Just be careful not about the yellow, as it is really easy to make yellow text uneligible. So, I'm not sure if we're keeping the colored text for stats. I'm not sure. Again, mostly for reasons exactly like you said. Um, and it's also basically um, we're kind of straddling the line of whether or not we're coloring the stats or we're coloring the triggered effects, right? So rather than coloring the stats, we're coloring the triggers to make it more clear and like where they delineate. There is a version of cards that do that. I think Battlecon Online does it, maybe. I know there's a version of cards that do... Oh, right, of course. War. War does it. So there's a... If you're seeing war... Oh, jeez. War actually does this with their trigger, trigger effects, right? So notice how end of beats are green after activating are blue. On oh, hits are red. If we color the triggered effects, we're likely not going to color the stats. So what might happen instead is that instead of this just being normal text, what might happen is this negative two priority might be italicized instead. So it would say on hit elemental form, the opponent has minus two priority next beat. But then this would be italicized to make it clear that it's a stat or a number change. Yes, there is very... In so the, the thing about it is that there's probably like a 30, 30 second to a minute delay. Um, but that's just how it is. I'm sorry. I wish I could do something about it. It's pretty jittery. Yeah, that's what I'm getting to, uh, Jay. Is that the stream is not consistent enough, or rather the amount that I'm outputting is not consistent enough for YouTube to be happy with me. So it will buffer on you, like, quite a bit. It's quite unfortunate, but I'm sorry. The VOD will be very clean. Yes. Um, based on my understanding as well, literally all the changes will apply to all the characters and everything will get reprinted in Unleashed, making it like the ultimate, final Ultimax version. 300 over 62 days, whatever. I actually want to see what Kenny's motorcycle looks like. Hey, that looks really cool. Lower right, the motorcycle. But yes, there you go. So all the styles you have now are obsolete. I mean, it really depends, right? Um, based on my understanding, is that they still function exactly the same way. Well, not exactly. I, I think the, the point here is that like, I think the point being made here is that, like, it's not about forcing people to buy new copies of Battlecon, because you can still always just play Battlecon the way you want to be, you want it to be played. So you can still play with your current cards, and they would still be the same experience that you paid for. All the changes will be available, not just via Unleashed, right? So all the changes will also be available, like, via Store. And I think... I'm not sure if there's going to be print-and-play versions. Yeah, it might be... It might be colored triggered effects and little stat modifier icons.
But yeah, like at the end of the day, it's it's not about purposely obsoleting people's cards, right? That's not that's never the intention. Besides, Battlecon can be played whether or not you have the most current version of cards, I guess. It only really matters for the people who really want to get into competitive tournament play, I believe. And I can understand, though, that some people um, don't like the fact that the cards that they have are now quote-unquote obsolete. And I get that. Um, it's just that we can't choose to not update the game and make it better simply because of stuff like that, I guess. I guess that's the final answer because we understand that some people might feel like that it obsoletes their cards, which we don't think it really does. But uh, really, if we're scared to change cards up and fix them, I'm just not sure. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. Oh, shucks. Oh, why do you do this to me? It stops like 15... Okay. Thank you for telling me, everyone. But it says that it's transmitting properly. Let's see if we can fix this. Yeah, I'm getting it. I'm getting it to be real laggy as well. I mean, <laughs> crazy and awesome. We're trying. We're trying our best. We're trying our best. At the end of the day, we just want to give everybody a good game that they will feel proud to display on their shelves and feel proud to, you know, bust out during game nights and have the cards all look nice and uniform and worded properly and just look like a clean and polished product, you know? Sorry, I'm trying to fix the stream. Let me just check the background. What's taking up my bandwidth? Discord's closed. We could try closing more programs. Um, I guess we can turn off Steam. See if that helps. is the most intuitive. Um, okay. Uh, Ash Ashtaroth brings up a very valid point. So uh, Ashtaroth was mentioning something along the lines of like having the movement be listed as a range. There you go. So on one end, I understand why one would feel that way because you look at movement and range as just fundamentally different things right but also but also movement is just an indication of a range because advance or retreat zero to two means that i could end up here or here or stay here or go here or go here which is literally similar to having a range of 0 to 2. Which is an indication of where your attacks would hit. So it's just an same indication of what spaces on the board you could end up in. That's one point. But I do understand that I would prefer it if it didn't say 0 tilde 2. And instead said 0 dash 2. Because um, that way it wouldn't look like the range stat. Right? And also... Uh, in actual English language, 
0 dash 2 is just implied to be 0 to 2, right? So that way you can say advance or retreat 0 to 2 towards your motorcycle. And that makes more sense, right? As opposed to the tilde sign. I think the tilde sign is what's throwing a lot of people off. I've given the same feedback to the designers. And I think if we just changed it to 0 dash 2 instead of 0 tilde 2, it would look way better and way, be way more parsable. Uh, I don't know. Okay. So post unleashed, would we still be expecting to see balance for BCO? Yes. BCO will continue development uh, and get balance changes as it goes, probably. Again, I'm not the lead balance guy, so I don't know if Battlecon Online will get balance changes. Or for some strange reason, Battlecon Online is just perfectly balanced right now. No idea. Um, yeah, thanks. The keywords are something that we're trying to standardize across everything to make everything way more clear. Yeah, I do, do. I do apologize for the chat lag and um, and everything. I, I apologize. I mean, my internet's not necessarily the best all the time. <laughs> oh my gosh! So when you're hearing this. I should be already on the board, having already explained the last 30 minutes to all of you. And I'm currently seeing that the stream is just still on that thing. Oh, Benjamin. Uh, Battlecon... Yeah, <laughs> it's actually a really great time to get into Battlecon because it's quote-unquote done. It's like, yeah, it's, it's a really good time. You won't get the thrill of having new characters release every year, but now you have this thrill of l looking at and seeing a hundred characters that you've never experienced before. Having all of these organized events, having playtesting happening. And as far as I know, we might still release characters, but not as a, an entire product, but just, just as individual characters. So we, there, there's, there's still more Battlecon stuff to come. It's just that we're not going to be releasing an entire new set every year or something. Uh, we plan to do more Indians stuff, but just not Battlecon stuff. And that's fine. All right, thanks for giving me an update on the stream uh, health. Sorry if it's jittery and laggy. I, I'm ap I apologize. This didn't happen the last two streams. I don't know what's different right now. Such a good style. Sorry, such a good base, I mean. Yeah, I'm just waiting on all of you to catch back up <laughs> to the point in time where I've already explained all the movement thing. Uh, but yeah. Ah, it's good to hear Ash there, Roth. Yeah, the dash I think would be just way more clear. Do you note that I'm just responding to everybody's comments now? Death Knight guy? Um, hey Woko 2, are you referring to perhaps Vekel? Because he is kind of a knight and he has ghosts. 
Is he the person you're talking about? Sir Vekil Vurus. He's a Revenant Knight. Is he the is he the guy you're talking about? If so, uh, what about Vekel? What what do you want to know about Vekel? Vekel's a cool guy. Probably one of uh, Cameron's favorite character designs. Uh, for those who don't know, Cameron is the lead programmer on Battlecon Online. So he's the guy who programs the client side of the game. So if you see any animation effects, you see any cards in the game that are implemented, that's Cameron, and it's all his fault. Vekel's one of his favorite characters by design. Yes, Ashtaroth, there's still no way to switch into a finisher that you want, the same way as in BCO. BCO has that advantage over PaperCon, because BCO lets you set attack pairs that aren't real, right? Because in BattleCon... Um, shucks, what do you call this? In BattleCon Online, you can select your finisher in hand. But then the game will put two cards face down, despite the fact that you've only selected one card. You can't do that in real life. So it's pretty, it's pretty, it's pretty interesting to do. Like to do it, you'd have to include a a new card in the game that essentially functions as a secondary switch. That's just weird. Hey, David. You know what? That's great. That's great. David, we're glad that it helped you teach newer players. Our goal is also to make these changes for the advanced players. For people with above 100 games or something like that. Because the point is in Battlecon, it's the faster you're able to parse the effects, the faster you can get back to playing. Rather than spending 15 minutes each turn reading every single one of your opponent's cards over and over and over again. So, Asheroth, yes. Was there a consideration to just have an extra card in a hand that's the finisher? Yes. I mean, that's what we did for Battlecon Online. It's just that I'm not sure if... I'm not sure if Battlecon physical is balanced around that fact. I'm pretty sure some cards would be basically, like, not so. If they got that. Like, if Dolores could... Yeah, Dolores might be a big example. If Dolores, for example, could Fatal Descent after... So let's say Dolores picked Funerary Rites, Switch Dodged into Fatal Descent range, and then instantly nined you for damage. Like, there's a lot of finishers in Battle on Paper that if you could switch into them post-dodge, then activate them immediately the next turn, I'm pretty sure they would be beyond, like, too strong. BCO has the advantage of only having around 20 characters that we have to worry about. So, that's that's a different problem. Um, yes. Alright. If you're talking about Vekel, Vekel's cool. We all like him. I use them as an example to explain the new teleport keyword. Which used to be move directly. So if you played Hiketch or any characters, or you know, Kadath, the actual character with the t style called teleport, it's the thing that says like you can move to any space, but you don't move into the spaces between starting and ending destination spaces. So say if my effect said to teleport here, I wouldn't go one, two, three, I would literally just go there. Has he changed at all? Well, you can find out for yourself by checking the... By checking the module. This Battlecon module that I'm currently on has a bunch of playtesting stuff. It is also the publicly available official Battlecon module for Tabletop Simulator. So if you have Tabletop Simulator, go out there, look at all the cards to your own, you know, at your own leisure, at your own pace, and you can see how cool they are and how fun they are. And yeah, 
Um, we're not sure about the stats or the triggered effects yet. We'll have to ask a bunch of people and see what they think. Uh, do people still have more questions? I'm excited to answer for all of you. Yeah, I'm just giving you the tools to do to be able to do what you want. Uh, here are Vegel's cards in case you wanted to see them. If you want to see them for yourself, I, I actually have no idea how Vekul has changed. Mostly because we haven't been testing him, or rather, he hasn't been the focus. The focus have been generally the promo characters. I think most of the Wanderers are actually done. And we only have to worry about the promos from Dev. So characters like Oriax, Bat... Ah, uh, sorry. Oriax, Takeshi, Eliza, so on and so forth. Yes, um, chat lag. As you're listening to this, I'm currently talking about on the stream, at least where you're at. I'm talking about how we're implementing finishers in Battlegone Online. And I did that like a few minutes ago. Oh my gosh, the stream lag. I'm sorry. I'm sorry it wasn't as interactive or as real time as I expected it to be. It's quite unfortunate, and I'm sad that it ended up that way. Oh my gosh, David. So true. Less rules arguments, the better, right? One thing that we didn't list down here is something that I really want to talk about. Um, that's really hard to talk about, but let's see if we can find the thing. So I can't show it to you now because uh, it's still in code and unquote testing. Uh, and I... I I can't properly show it off yet, but here you go. So you know how this is the reload, uh, sorry, this is the reload base. Uh, this is actually really hard to do there, so I have to do it here. There you go. So for example, this line is gunner reload. If I move this down, this is point blank reload. If I move this down, this is trick reload. Move this down, sniper reload. And I move this down, that's um, crossfire reload, right? So what we're planning to do is that every character will now have two reference cards. One of them, which is the one on the left, will be all styles. And there will be no black border on the right side. The other one will be all the bases, including the generic bases like strike will be all the bases and then won't have a left border. That way you can match attack pairs like that, like I just did with the reload, but with any base in the game for that character. So now if I'm fighting against Rukyuk, I can check what, for example, what point blank shot looks like, assuming this had shots stats. So now you can form attack pairs of your opponent's cards in your own hand using the reference cards that your opponent gives you. So that's like another aspect of Battlecon Online that we wanted to take, was to be able to do that. So that's something that we might be doing, maybe. It will be cool. Yeah, the, uh, see, the real answer is to just ask your friendly local game store to stock Battlecon products. Because they get a discount on the shipping. Christopher, I mean. It's a problem for me as well, because I live in the Philippines. So, yeah, I live in the Philippines. <laughs> Do you give individual names for the Wisps when you play Veckel? Um, 
No, I don't personally give each of his wisps names. I think they're all generic. But if I had to give them names, it'd be Huey, Dewey, and Louie. There you go. Oh, that's something I didn't I didn't show off. Right, 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 right. Back up, back up, boys, back up. Anya, where are you? So I don't know if you can tell. Um let's write. Let's draw. Okay. Uh we need to change my color. Change color to blue. Alright. And now we just need to lift this card. Lift this card off. We need to lock this card. Toggles lock. Toggles lock. That way we can draw on it. And now that we can draw on it. So I don't know if you can all see that, but. No, sorry. So the templating changes have not been given to every character. Only the Wanderers so far. Because essentially they're the newest ones coming out. So they're, they have to be templated anyway. So they're, they're going first. Oh, my internet. I'm so sorry, everyone. My internet's real bad. I'm just I'm just reading on your backlog. I don't know how many more we're planning to do. Uh, you can check the module for some characters that aren't out yet. But yeah. Uh, Beanborg is asking when is Battlecon X Millennium Blades crossover? I mean that already exists. As a because Battlecon characters are characters in Millennium Blades. Unless you're asking for a Millennium Blades character in Battlecon, in which case that also exists. Dang it, she's not here. Um, dang it, wait. Uh. Oh, internet. Oh, no. Internet, what have you done? Oh, gosh. Does this have it? Does this module have it? Oh, I loaded this module. Uh, I loaded this module for nothing. It doesn't even have it. Dang.
Wait, let me fix all of this. There you go. Millennium Blades character in Battlecon. Yes, she has Exaltius as an actual card. I think her ability is literally destiny drawing. So there you go. Actually, just a Millennium Blaze character in Battlecon. Yeah, you're nearing the tail end. Hey, it's Road. Welcome, Road. Um, yeah, so there, there was a thing that I was meaning to show off that we got sidetracked about, but... If you look at the character cards and the style. Yeah, uh, the stream is going to have a little delay for all of y'alls. But yeah, if you look at the character cards, you'll see that they have these little things over here. So this one tells you the character name. This one on the lower right is like like a set symbol in magic, it tells you what set the character's from. So now you know that Wa Anya is from Wanderers. And then her name appears down here as well. Again, not final. Uh, as you can see, it's a bit hard to read on lighter backgrounds. But yeah, there you go. That's a small thing that I wanted to show off with these characters. Those small things on the bottom. Um, all right, uh, so so Christopher about the shipping costs It's because Essentially the way it works is that Brad we have a distribution center a fulfillment center in the UK Or at least somewhere near the UK so they don't have to pass through everything It's just in the UK when it gets shipped to you and that's why it costs that much but when you're ordering from the level 99 game store itself, we have to go through like actual postage channels. That means it has to go through post office in the US, go to the UK and all that stuff. But the thing about the Unleashed stuff is that we have a fulfillment center in the UK already. So what we do is we bulk deliver everything to the one warehouse in the UK. And then they're the one to ship it to you. And that's why it's cheaper. What about stun guard as a stat like in BCO? This was a discussion in the playtest forum for quite a while. Sorry, playtest discord for quite a while. Um, we are thinking of doing so, but we're not sure. The thing about it is that... I'm just not sure if it would fit on the card anymore. But we're not against it. We're totally not against literally turning the cards in Battlecon to look like the cards in Battlecon online. Because those things are designed really well and look really nice too. Um, I'm just not sure. Again, since we're reprinting everything, we could literally make giant changes to the way the cards are templated. Heck, the cards could look completely different from what they look like right now. But again, I am not sure. Uh... Sorry, um, MAA7895 asks, are we going to get more monthly updates? Um, probably. I think it's going to be a question more of like, do we have things to say? <laughs> um, but yeah, I think... I All right. Let's see if this works. All right, I restarted the stream. Uh, do people see anything? All right, it says I have an excellent connection now. We'll see if the stream catches up.
But there you go. Um, and for people who want to see, this is Riti over here. So let's see if this appears on stream correctly. Did it, did it, did it, did it appear on stream correctly? Hopefully it does. Whoops. Uh, you didn't see my desktop? You didn't see how dirty my desktop was? Oh, there you go. Oh, I just had to restart the stream. It works now. But yeah, there you go. There's Rariti. Oh my gosh, the delay was so wild. There you go. There's Rariti. So you can see Exaltius is here. He has reading. All right, that's great. So, but yeah, set logos or set symbols, I guess. Bottom right corners and all that stuff. Oh my gosh, I just had to restart the stream. I don't know what was happening there. I'm so sorry. I should have restarted the stream earlier. There you go. Oh, oh my gosh, I just fixed it. Yes. So so that's what's happening. Um, and in case it wasn't clear, I think the, the stream did me an injustice in how I was showing the thing. But the way new reference cards would work is that... So you'd have this, you'd have the second reference card, and you could essentially match the thing and go down like that but instead of just being able to do it with one base which is reload you'd be able to do it with every single base in existence for that character at the very least so you'd be able to match attack pairs like this Uh, Ashtaroth, I told you, it's Huey, Dewey, and Louie. Yeah, okay. I My internet is currently whacking out. So, for individual character releases, how many more? Uh, no, no, no clue. I'm sorry. Uh, if there's anything to go by, here are all the characters that are in the one dev promo bag. And I'm pretty sure some of them you haven't seen before, like Peril or Victor or, uh, I don't know, Himmel. Like, these are probably characters you've never heard of or seen before. Ah, uh, no, no, we know who Victor is. Never mind. But yeah, like Peril and Himmel. Yeah, everyone, there's there's still a considerable delay. I am so sorry. But it's a good thing that the stream is about to end anyway. So if you have all of your questions, do give me your questions now so I can answer it on the stream. Thank goodness the audio isn't as delayed as the video itself. So hopefully I can answer, uh, answer your questions properly. I'm so sorry, everyone. Uh, I need to talk to my internet service provider for this. Hopefully all of you were able to at least enjoy the stream. If there are still questions, I'll wait for a few minutes uh, after I say this statement to see all of your chats. And I'll probably just reply to you on video or on chat.
just delete all of this, unlock these. So I'm just taking your final questions before I sign off for the night. Ooh, that's a nice question. Who is my favorite character in the new set? Quite simple. My favorite character is a toss-up between Feylana and the Jin. I'm not sure who I like more. The Jin has really wacky effects. Really crazy. But Feylana can constantly hit for 7 damage a turn. So how could I not like that? Uh, from the changes that you've showed us today, which one is the best one for me? I personally really enjoy the character-specific keywords. So, like, Feylana having the keyword conviction. Because I play a lot of characters that do this. That, that say, like, if a specific thing happens, do a thing. Like, multiple times over their kit. So, for example, Seth has an ability that goes, like, if you guess right with your unique ability... So instead of that, just say Foresight, right? And that way you can just have the card say Foresight, do a thing. Foresight, do that other thing. And that's just freaking awesome. I love that. So that one's my favorite, the, the keyword. The, the character-specific keyword that makes their cards less wordy. Will Brad consider releasing the updated template for fan-made projects? Not sure. But when we're done with it, I don't see why we wouldn't. It lets you create characters you want. You know? So you can have fun and enjoy your life. Alright. So that's all the time I have for today. Thank you so much for being with me on stream. I do apologize for some of the technical issues. I also really apologize for the stream lag. Again, not intentional at all. Thank you so much for being with me on this stream. I hope all of you enjoyed what you saw. And I'm really glad and happy that all of you are seem to be with us on the changes. And think that the changes will bring about a positive... Uh, bring about a positive change or a positive effect at BattleCon. So, uh, without much else to say, thank you so much for watching. And thank you, World of Indians. Thank you. And good night. You're all great.